In this first movie on environment building with Poser, we're going to look at a couple concepts that are good to keep in the back of your mind as we start looking at all the wealth of content that comes with the Poser Game Development Edition. They at Smith Micro threw in tons of stuff to work with, and working with some of the pre-built environments they have is a great way to shortcut or accelerate your way into getting content into Unity. Now, a few quid pro quos. The environment itself, or the stock that comes with Poser, is actually fairly high resolution. And by high resolution, I mean lots of polygons to define the forms. So we're going to take a tour through some of the stock items for considerations that we'll go ahead and apply to everything we work with in Poser as we consider Unity as the target and eventually mobile devices or however the game's going to be played. At the very beginning, where we've got the figures right here in the library, and I've reconfigured my screen a little bit to show off more of things that are on here. I'm assuming that you've got a little fluency with Poser. Under the Secret Agent series, there is a Headquarters prop. There's Headquarters and Headquarters Full. The difference is whether there's extra stuff in the scene. And it really depends on whether you need some of the elements that come already assembled into the Headquarters Full. Desks, other little things in the cubicle area, whether you need them or not. As you approach this, remember this is going to devices that have to manage everything. We can see right here in Headquarters Full that this prop by itself is 12 megs worth of textures and polygons. If we come back to the Headquarters Basic, we see that this is only 157K. Significant difference in what's being contained in that. So one of the first things in considering how or if you should use certain pre-built poser props is really how large they are. Don't feel like if we get into the Headquarters Full or you need everything that's in there that the world has gone to pieces. You can work with it, and let me show you how. We'll go ahead and simply insert the headquarter right in here. And Poser will think about this for just a second. And it pops in around Andy, and I've got Andy in here for scale. Now, the headquarters by itself is a fairly economical type of prop. There's lots of straight lines, there's not many curves, and as we back out of the scene here a little bit and then get above it, we can see that we really have just a grid work of architectural elements. This is a good thing because it means that there are probably fewer polygons that make up these shapes right here. How do you know how many polygons are in the scene? Well, there's a new feature in the Game Development Edition that's not in the other versions of Poser. And when we come to Figure, you'll see there's a tool set called Reduce Polygons. Now, this is a very important little tool to work with. If we enact it right here, we'll see that we've got a slider control right here. And if you drag it all the way to the right, this will reveal how many polygons are in the currently selected object. So in the body or the main body of the headquarters prop, we can see that we've got 14,000 plus polygons. Now, believe it or not, this isn't a prohibitive amount of polygons to work with in a scene, especially if this is going to be a major environment and you might be moving from room to room. That would depend on how the story is put together. To reduce the polygon count, it's just a matter of simply dragging the slider and deciding where your threshold of pain is between visual degeneration and excellent poly count. Reduce this by about half here. We're at close to 7,000, and I'll click OK. We'll see that things change just a little bit. The light is playing just a little bit differently. A way to kind of preview and see if this is going to be an issue or not is to go ahead and come to the window area to Ray Trace Preview. This will open a window that right away shows what the scene looks like, and it imitates where your camera is in the scene right there. So if we go ahead and zoom into the scene a little bit here, I'm holding the Command or Alt key on the keyboard and then using my mouse to scroll, we can go ahead and get a better idea of what the scene's going to look like and whether these polygons are getting too few and they start shading incorrectly or something like that. If I go ahead and scroll the scene here just a little bit, See if we get above the roof line, if it'll just turn all, yes, it turned all gray. So if I back up in the scene just a little bit, we can take a look at some of these up-close polygons and see exactly, well, it looks like everything has a fairly high level of integrity, and that's okay. So what we've done is reduce the polygon count here by half, and we still have something that's very, very usable and presentable in terms of a prop. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other props that are available to us to work with. We've got some other scenes if we're dealing with places in here, and we won't take a look at all of these, so no panic involved. But what I would like to do is look at some of the other locations where you will find scenes and scene elements that you can bring in. 
One of the first ones is props itself right here, and I've highlighted one in the sci-fi room area. We go ahead and scroll up just a little bit. This happens to be under places. There's medieval guard houses and things like that, modern mansions. The reason I selected this is it looks, well, a little bit more like some of the sci-fi games you encounter on a regular basis. There are individual rooms in here, including battle bots if you want to work with those later on. But I thought it would be a good idea to show you one of these scenes and considerations with this right here. So before I insert this into my scene, what I would like to do is I'm going to close this render preview right here. And I'm going to make sure that the headquarters body is selected and simply press the delete key on my keyboard. I'll confirm that I want that deleted and everything goes away. So let's come back down to science fiction room A. I'll double click on this. And now we've got this in our scene. We can go ahead and orbit about it. There are some things that this scene has that the other one did not have, and that is predominantly curves. We've got pipes that curve up here or hanging tubes. We've got round elements right here that significantly increase the polygon count. So if you desire these types of details in your scene, understand that we'll increase the polygon count in your scene. And if we come to figure, reduce polygons, we see that this scene has a whopping almost 40,000 polygons. So the first aspect in considering scene building and environment building with poser props is how heavy is it in terms of polygons?